Okay, hello, good evening. Today, our third part of discussion about emergency and trauma, EMS is Christian Bank. Uh, I hope the last part we discussed uh, emergency and trauma through three sessions, or this is the third session. Uh, I hope we finish it today. I hope no problems here. Uh, last two sessions and today we will complete all scenarios and all related questions uh, to the previous two sessions okay i think we um, stopped at um, yes five out of 35 i think this was our last question was this undertake an abdominal ultrasound okay so we'll start now with this question so we can start now okay first Montez, you can start i cannot see the question screen still okay yes Okay. I can, I can, yes. A 28-year-old woman who is 18 weeks pregnant presents with sudden chest pain. Her blood pressure is 150 over 70 millimeter of mercury. Saturations are 92% on 15 liter oxygen and her heart rate is 130 beats per minute. There are no murmurs and her chest is clear. There are no, there are signs of thrombophlebitis in the left leg. What is the most likely problem? A, pulmonary embolism, B, aortic dissection, C, mitral valve regurgitation, D, myocardial infarct, E, myocarditis. Um, I think it is pulmonary embolism because she has chest pain. She has history of, um, current history of thrombophlebitis in the leg. So there's uh, embolism, embolism uh, venous thromboembolism. And also her oxygen saturation is less even on high flow oxygen. So it is pulmonary embolism. Okay, let's see other answer. A, 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 all except about A, pulmonary embolism. Okay, yes, exactly. We had another scenario before with the same scenario, but it was an aortic dissection. Anyone can remember the difference between two scenarios? Widening of mediastinum. One of there them. were heart murmurs. Sorry, heart murmur, exactly. Okay. The previous question, so patient, same symptom, just pain and um, hypertension, problem in heart rate, but he just mentioned that the patient has an aortic or my aortic regurg murmur. Aortic regurg murmur, widening of mediastinum and something like this. It was an aortic dissection. Okay, in this scenario, he just want to uh, um, uh, uh, att att attract your, uh, your mind about pulmonary embolism, you just mean there are signs of embophlebite in the left leg. He will never confuse you in the exam and he asking about an abortic dissection and he will mention there is signs of thrombophlebite in the leg. He, he is not so bad to try to confuse you. Okay, they are benign enough and, and fair enough to tell you there is signs of thrombophlebitis. You want to use his problem is related to thrombophlebitis. And she's pregnant and has a hypercoagulable circulation and she has a thrombophlebitis. This patient mostly has a pulmonary embolism. Okay, is it clear about this question? Yes, it's clear. Okay, Dr. Duffer, you will participate with us, yes? Yes. Okay, so we say, Dr. Um, uh, we have six participants, and you will be number seven. Okay, you just started the first question. 
Okay. I'll tell you about your turn. Next turn, Dr. Sarah. Mm -hmm. The question. Still not, not on the screen. Mm -hmm. Anyone has a question on the screen? No. No. No, Dr. Rami, not yet. No, sir. Okay, I already shared it, so I'm waiting. No problem. Okay. Yes, now it appeared. Um, a 19 year old intravenous, uh -huh. a 19 year old intravenous drug abuser recovering from a surgical drainage of a swallow's abscess. He is found collapsed in the ward toilet, unresponsive with pinpoint pupils. What is the most appropriate immediate management? Mm, that is drug overuse. Like I will give intravenous full methanol. Intervening flumogenil. The patient. Naloxone? Yeah, naloxone. Okay. Naloxone. I will give intervention. The patient naloxone. is uh, IVDU, IVDA, mm -hmm. intervenous drug abuser. So he is taking something like mm -hmm. uh, morphine, and then the patient okay. has uh, an attack of overdose. With pain point pupil, and mm -hmm. this is posognomonic for morphine up uh, overdose. So the mist is mm -hmm. the antidote for morphine, which is intravenous naloxone. This is the antidote for morphine. Here is asking about the antidote for morphine. Okay. Mm. Next question. Who's third? Dr. Nagua or Nago. Are you ready? Okay, I think she, I think not ready. So, okay, Dr. Ali. Yeah. Uh, 68. Uh year old male is admitted to a surgical ward for to for assessment of severe epigastric pain his abdomen is soft and non tender however the nurse forced you to look at the ecg it looks abnormal which is of the following which of the following features an indication for urgent coronary thrombolysis or percutaneous intervention okay uh, right bundle branch block st elevation of 1 mm in lid leads uh, V1 to V6, ventricular tachycardia, Q wave in, lead, uh, in leads V1 to V6, a cystic amount elevation of a greater than one millimeter, and leads to three and ADF. Yeah, I'm going with uh, STEMI MI, which is the last one, a cystic amount elevation of a greater than one millimeter, and lead two or three and four and ABF, which is the inferior MI. Exactly, this is one of the few questions that you will have about an ECG and you don't have more than two, maybe three questions. They are very clear and most will be mostly will be related to our surgical with hypercalcemia, hypercalcemia, hypercalemia, um, and so on in this question and the uh, hypothermia like shear wave or pulmonary embolism. But this is one of the, um, I mean, it is not a common question in exam, but this is talking about inferior ischemia. And even the indication, I didn't see it in recalls for a long time. Most about ECG, as I told you, related to our surgical work. But he just want you here to know uh, any finding, so you can uh, direct the patient to the uh, uh, good uh, diagnosis and direct him to uh, uh, the uh, consultations. Uh, the the uh, particular consultation you should direct the patient to. He is taking the indication or cerebrosis intervention, ST elevation more than two meter or two 
consecutive anterior leads from V1 to V6 or the inferior leads, which is 2, 3, and ABF, AVL. Okay? okay, just know it like this. The question, if came in the exam, there are not so many questions, so questions about ECG are repeated. Okay, ST elevation more than one, mil, <coughs> one millimeter and leads to three and ABF and ABL. Okay, next question. A 63 year old male is gardening when he trips and lands on a cyst. He sustains a deep laceration on his lateral side. It measures three centimeters depth by seven centimeters lens. It penetrates down to the pool, but no fracture is evident on imaging or examination. His comorbidities include type two diabetes, uh, and polymyalgia aromatica takes regular low dose prednisolone. Which of the options below is the safest way of managing the wound? Primary closure using deep tension sutures, primary closure in layers, delayed primary closure, full thickness skin graft, split thickness skin graft. I think primary closure in layers. B. Okay. This diabetic patient, polymyalgia rheumatica, takes corticosteroids. Okay, and this is a wound three centimeter depth and seven centimeter lens. It's down to the and he lands on a some sort like knife or like knife knife so this thing this is the knife used for cutting um us and something like so what do you think Uh, as I said, I, he, his diabetes is diet controlled. Um, so I'll go for primary closure. But, but this uh, is un unclean most of wound. our we'll colleagues go for say primary same. closure. This is drama and any clean wound. This is unclean wound, exactly. This is an unclean wound and deep. And by the way, just to put in mind, in most, most, uh, uh, most wounds in, in the thigh or buttocks, uh, mostly we don't go direct for primary closure. We, we, we deal it with like the pre-anal. Sometimes uh, you leave it for secondary or sometimes you just make delayed, delayed the primary closure because this is unclean wound. The sassy or uh, I don't know exactly, but this is the, uh, what's used for cutting the grass. So it is uh, unclean, unclean and dirty wound. So you have to keep first few days for cleaning the wound, and giving antibiotics. And this patient has some comorbidities. He's diabetic. He's, um, he's taking uh, some steroids. So this patient need first to clean the wound, then go for primary closure. This is the same like primary closure, but delayed after cleaning zone. This is a delayed primary closure. Okay. Yes, I get it. Thank you, Dr. Romian. Thank you. Okay. It is, he gives you a very long scenario. Take it as deep. Take care that it is not unclean. Take care the patient is diabetic. Take care the patient is uh, on corticosteroid because of polymyalgia. So he wants to attract your mind. Don't go for primary closure, please. This patient has many comorbidities and this patient is unsafe for primary closure. Okay. 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 Next question. Okay, just a second. Just I have one call. A second, please. Sorry, I'm back. Me too. Hello. Okay. Uh, who's? Yes. 
هلو دكتور عبد القادر اوكي عبد القادر دكتور عبد القادر اتفضل yes uh, thank you sir for having me uh, a 19 year old students all from a second floor window is hypotensive though this improves with a small volume of crystalloid um, text shows depression of the left main bronchus and deviation of the trachea to the right what is the most likely injury tension pneumothorax parenchyma lung injury aortic rupture cardiac tamponade flail chest mm, though i have confusion between tension pneumothorax and aortic rupture um, but i i want to go through um, aortic rupture okay so which is tension pneumothorax I'm also thinking about uh, tension pneumothorax, but uh, as chest X-ray showing the uh, depression of the left main bronchus. As far um, I'm remembering, um, in tension pneumothorax there were not that type of this type of findings, the depression of left main bronchus. But deviation of the trachea, it's true. It is normally present in tension pneumothorax. Okay, so but, depression of left main bronchus. And deviation of the trachea to so, the to the uh, right. Is it is not a, a clinical picture of chest X-ray of or pathognomonic features of chest X-ray of some disease? Yes. Okay, so it's tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax. It makes depression of the right left main bronchus, or it, it makes depression of a bronchus. If you find if you find a deviation in tension pneumothorax, would you find a depression of any of the main bronchi, or the whole bronchus with the two main bronchi is deviated? Okay. Is anything in the scenario? The patient has a problem in his gas exchange. So it's um, or his oxygen saturation. So. Any anything in the scenario about oxygen saturation? No, okay. but no. Anything in the scenario about difficult breathing? No, it's only about hypotension mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's improved with a small volume of crystal. Okay. So it's so it's out. So um, so then I'm sticking with my first opinion. It should be out of culture. Exactly. They didn't they didn't mention anything like widening of the mediastinum. Yes. Okay. Hey, this three. three we, we mentioned the last session, three main features of rupture, aortic rupture, aortic disruption, okay? There are six signs, yeah. There are six signs for aortic rupture. Uh, we are taking the chest X-ray. Yes, taking it from the chest X-rays. If we imagine in this case, uh, sorry, Dr. Rami, for interrupting you. No, 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 okay. So, for, for when you, Imagine the trachea and the bronchus, the trachea moving to the right side. So if the tension, if the tension pneumothorax, the all the trachea with the main bronchus move. So the dissected aortic aneurysm, one of presentation deviation, depression of the left main bronchus and the right deviation of the main trachea and also obliterated of the aortopulmonary gap, also widening of the mediastinum. But in the EMRC explanation, they are saying about aortic rupture. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, if it is just um, a small rupture. Okay, doctor, uh, we, we, we just taking it. This is our rupture would improve with a small amount of crystalloids. 
minimal improve if there is a, a peri a peri yani it is not shouldn't uh, contain hematoma exactly this contain the hematoma not not complete rupture or complete uh, disruption complete disruption, disruption. Complete okay rupture. or the complete uh, this is just rupture or just this section whatever but just go go for the uh, uh, just take this question by exclusion is this tension pneumothorax no i i don't think so no. it's not tension pneumothorax no problem with yeah. gas exchange no no problem with difficult breathing uh, no problem with a silent chest. He, he, any any problem or any disease or any uh, pathology he will give to you give some information about this pathology. Parenchymal lung injury. We really find question about parenchymal lung injury, and we will find also some hemo hemothorax, and he will mention for you about hemothorax. Is it cardiac tamponade? The patient will not no. improve. No, will not improve. Not by by small volume fluid is it flail chest i think it will be mm -hmm. manifest in flail chest in the fracture or some depression paradoxical respiration paradoxical so the most, respiration yeah so the most one here which will be the most right maybe it is not um logic or not in practice that aortic corruption and improve and something like this but but he gives you some sign he wants you to know that the signs of aortic corruption is depression left main bronchus deviation to the right widening of mediastinum and all the other things that mentioned by Dr. Love. Okay, simple question. Don't think more about, about more details about it. Okay, I think it's repeated many times about the lift main bronchus and deviation. And you will have another question, by the way, maybe end about depression of the right main bronchus and deviation to the left, something like this, and it will be a wrong answer. He will ask about the features of our decryption. Okay, next yeah. question. Yes, thank you. A 55-year-old motorcyclist is involved in a road, road traffic accident and sustained Agostillo and Anderson that 3C fracture. What was trapped in the wreckage for seven hours, during which time he bled profusely from the actual side. He has an established distal neurovascular defect. What is the most appropriate course of action? Computation, skeletal traction, application of external fixator and arterial reconstruction, insertion of intramedullary nail and arterial reconstruction, application of a plate to tibia and arterial reconstruction. As long as it's more than seven hours after extraction, most likely it's not viable. So we go for amputation. I choose A. You choose? A, amputation. Amputation, uh, because? Yeah. It's more than six hours, so most likely the limb is not viable. As well, uh, the safe is not here to go for uh, amputation. Okay. Why? Okay. Why you go more than seven hours? You go for amputation if it is fracture or something like this. Why did you choose amputation exactly? Because you know it's the, the, the time of. Uh, like uh, what does injury. what does like, Gastel what does Gastello and Anderson type three C type uh, example injury. for you? It's like severe injury to the soft tissue and uh, it's like a, a crushed injury. You can say. Okay, what 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 uh, Gastello and Anderson type three C fracture uh, point two? 
injury to what? But a new neurovascular bundle is uh, exactly injured. exactly. Yeah. This 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 what I I, I want to, to know from you. Uh, we say Gastil and Anderson fracture. Gastil and Anderson type three C. It is neurovascular bundle injury. Neurovascular and this is the worst type of uh, open fractures. Okay, and uh, after seven hours, so uh, the limb is um, ischemic and irreversible ischemia and irreversible damage happened to the skin. So the best is amputation for this patient. The best is amputation. I just want to tell you briefly, here is the keyword, Castellan Anderson type three, type C fracture with seven hours delay. If someone is writing, thank you for writing. Please just close the, uh, the editing tab. Thank you. Okay, so this is type C, so this is go for amputation, okay? I hope you didn't forget also. Yeah. Okay. Gestil and Anderson again. Okay, type one, low energy wound with less than one centimeter. Type two, more than one centimeter, less than 10 centimeter. Type three, more than 10 centimeter with extensive tissue damage. Okay. Um, type three is a addux of tissue cover, not need for any coverage. Type three B is um, yeah, in addux of tissue and you, you will need a soft tissue cover. Type 3C is associated with neurovascular or arter mainly arterial injury. Mainly arterial injury. Okay. Gastillo and Anderson classification is very important, especially type 3C. Type 3C is very important and the most common come in the exam. Next question. Who is next? Okay. Dr. Duffer, you can go for the question. Which of the following is or not? Dr. Uh, Sorry? Dr. Duffer or Dr. Muhammad? I think uh, you are the last two. Yes. Okay, so, Dr. Duffer and then Dr. Muhammad. Anyone can start and another one can go, no problem. Yes. It is a is question. Okay. Okay. The question. Which of the following is not typically associated with the deglobing injury, overlying pillar of the skin, abnormal motility of the overlying skin, history of fraction type injury, improved result when the deglobing segment isn't left in situ as a temporary closure, poor result when the primary compression treatment is used in performance, to skinny graft. So it is, I choose the three, skin, history of the friction type injury. Type C, history of friction type injury. Yes. So which of the following is not, not typical, not typical associated so right. all of the following are typical for the gloving injury except one. Yes, except one. So all of the following, again, all of the following is? It is the D, so it is D. Improvers that when the degloving segment is left in C2 as a temporary closure. Exactly. So yes. all of the following is? Typical, except one. Okay, overlying pallor of the skin, yes. Abnormal motility, yes. 
Um, history of friction, yes. Poor results when primary compression treatment is used in preference to skin grafting. But the wrong one is improved result when the glove segment is left inside to add a temporary closure. Okay? Okay. Just concentrate with is not typically, by the way, in the stress of the exam, you should be sleeping good. Carbohydrate load before the, the day before the exam, drinking plenty of water before the exam, just uh, relax. A morning, no study at the night or the morning of the exam, and concentrate and reading every word and every thing in the uh, in the question. Okay. Next question. Who's there? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Which of the following statements relating to large volume blood loss in trauma is incorrect? Sonic stomach acid reduces the incidence of pre bleeding following surgery. Hypocalcemia may complicate resuscitation. Colloids are prepared initially as they reduce the incidence of coagulopathy. When patients receive over five units of whole blood mortality increase when blood products is greater than three weeks old are utilized. In the battlefield setting, a ratio of one to one to one for blood plasma plated is used. The first one is right. The second one is a common complication for blood transfusion or resuscitation. The third one it is not uh, initially uh, we use. We want to replace the blood loss. We go for, uh, we give you crystalloid and there is no response. We, we go for fresh blood. The fourth one, this is the rise. And the last one, this is the ratio we usually use. So I'm going with C. You are going with? C. 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 Okay. Yes. In trauma, in trauma, um, we prefer, in trauma, we prefer crystalloids better than colloids in the first. Okay. Uh, we don't prefer to give colloids early. We give crystalloids more in the start of any trauma. Uh, Tranexamic acid we use, hypocalcemia yes, happens when patient receives more than five units of blood mortality increase. Okay. In a battlefield setting, a ratio of 111, and I think we have a question about this ratio the yes. tumor transfusion ratio 1111 fresh frozen plasma, one tagged RBCs, and one uh, platelet we give the patient is used. So the only one, the colloids are not preferred initially. We prefer to give Hartman solution in the start of any trauma or bleeding. Okay, next question. We start from Dr. Mutaz again. Yes. The following features are typical of superficial partial dermal burns, except A, erythema, B, absence of blisters, C, spontaneous healing in most cases, D, no extension beyond proximal dermal papilla, E, good capillary refill at the burn site. So answer is B, absence of blisters, because superficial partial dermal burn has blisters. No. Sorry. Uh, typical superficial partial. B. Except for B. B. Because uh, uh, superficial partial dermal bonds list. will have the list. It has to have. Yeah. Exactly. B is false. B is the false one. Which following our typical. Mm. Except typical, except I, you see, I'm I'm just was confused with a phone call, so I I just didn't read except, so I just confused. Okay, typical except, so all 
are typical the same like Christian was Dr. Dofer, all are or Dr. Dofer exactly, or are right except one which is absence of blister, which is uh, common with the superficial partial dermal birds. Okay, next question, Dr. Sauro. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, a 28 year old male is involved in a road traffic accident. He is thrown from his motorbike onto the pavement and sustained a hemorrhagic and filled segment of the right chest. What is the most appropriate cause of action? CT scanning of the thorax, insertion of intercostal tube drain. Um, video assistant thoracoscopy, thoracotomy, CT angiogram of the thorax. So I will go for insertion of intercostal I mean, drain. Sorry, number? I will go for insertion B. B. B, insertion of intercostal tube drain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's a trauma and we told about this before. Any, any trauma and fracture ribs, any trauma pressure, even with minimal amount of hemo or pneumothorax, you go, should go for intercostal chest tube at once, okay? Any trauma, you should go for intercostal mm -hmm. chest tube at once. But in case of medical cases, you can sometimes if there is some uh, mild pneumothorax or minimal pneumothorax, you mm -hmm. can wait and the patient can go for conservative treatment. So where exactly, where exactly we, we, we insert the intercostal chest tube? Um, it has to be um, five to six intercostal speed mid-axillary mid line. Fifths or six? Fifths. Mm -hmm. only. The last, the last, the last update of uh, ATLS is fifth intercostal fifth space okay. just anterior to the mid axillary line. Axillary line, okay. Okay, just anterior to the mid axillary line, where we can put the um, needle decompression. Sometimes you are in the scene or in a, in, in a place you don't have a chest tube yeah. and you just to want to do an emergency. So you Take put in a white board, ca white board can you in the cancer space. Mm -hmm. Take one intercostal space. Second intercostal space. Mm -hmm. Anyone Need has line. different answer? I think it's a uh, fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line in the new ATLS, I think. Where exactly, Dr. Mando? Where? Uh, fifth okay. intercostal space mm -hmm. in the mid axillary line. Both of them fifth intercostal space. Yeah. The last update, both of them in the fifth intercostal space, just anterior to the mid axillary line. Okay, this is the okay. last update. Okay. Same, same till level. now, till now, till now, till now, they put it in the second intercostal space, mid clavicular, but no, this is all, this all is changed. It. Just put it, put it in the same place of the mm -hmm. chest tube. You just take it out and put the chest tube or put the chest tube first, whatever, but both of them, fifth intercostal space, just anterior to the mid axillary line. Okay? For the second mm -hmm. intercostal space, it is not chest tube. It is just a needle to decompress. Like bone needle. That's what he like, was he saying. In highly emergency unit in highly emergency had no availability of the chest tube until to prepare for chest tube. Mm -hmm. You should drain by the putting a large pore cannula in the second intercostal space to aspirate the fluid, reduce the tension in motorax, and prepare for the chest tube. In the fifth, not in the second. They changed it since yeah. last year. No. Yes. Even in our in, okay. in our exam, even in our exam in yeah. April two thousand nineteen, all the protocol and all the updates. Okay. Uh, and the eight and the uh, some of our friends was having at the ATLS updated. It was 
five center coastal space, okay? Both of them. Okay. 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 Next question. Who's the Dr. Ali? Yeah, uh, forty three year old man who has long-term history of alcohol misuse is admitted with history of an attack of vomiting after an episode of being drinking. After vomiting, he developed sudden onset left side chest pain, which is pleuritic in nature. On examination, he is profoundly septic and drowsy with a severe epigastric tenderness and left side chest pain. What is the most likely cause? Chest infection, bo Boyer uh, Haves syndrome, esophageal cancer, pulmonary embolus, embolus or cardiac infarct. Um, I'm going with uh, B, boyer Hayes syndrome, uh, because he's alcoholic. And yes. uh, yeah, and attack of vomiting also. Uh, and yeah, and chest pain. Chest pain and vomiting. This is a criteria of the Boyer Haves syndrome. Okay. Yeah. So is this patient an alcoholic? As I as you said, patient is alcoholic and vomiting after drinking, and then the patient has chest pain and pleuritic pain, and septic and drowsy, severe epigastric tenderness, left side chest tenderness. He is taking chest pain, chest tenderness pleurotic pain, show his direct your uh, attention about this is a enterothoracic problem. So it is not chest infection, no, esophageal cancer, not related yeah. and there is no uh, nothing in the scenario related to this. Pulmonary embolism, nothing in the scenario uh, about septicemia or drowsiness or pleuritic chest pain or, or, or the left chest pain. The, uh, remarks to a pulmonary embolus, myocardial infarction, the same. So the only one is sophageal injury, which is Burhaeg's syndrome. Okay? Yeah. Next question. Dr. Ibrahim, Yes. Which of the following is not a feature found on a chest X-ray in traumatic aortic disruption? Widened mediastinum, trachea deviated to the left, depression of the left main uh, stem bronchus, obliteration of the aortic knob, widened paraspinal interfaces. I'll choose B because trachea is deviated to the right. Exactly. This is a question I was asked about. Yeah. The trachea is deviated to the right with compression of the left main bronchus. So why didn't we assign them depression of the left main? From this question, you can go to all the criteria. Obliteration of the aortic knob, widening paraspinal interface, widening of the um, deviation of the right. All these five criteria should be in the aortic disruption. Okay, next question. So we have many questions now about our disruption and multiple scenario. I think it's clear now. Yes? That's what I, I'm talking about. When you finish the whole partition, you can uh, know and you can write down your notes about the related question and the related scenario and you can differentiate between what he wants you to know related to every scenario. Okay? That was uh, the, uh, the system of MRCS exam. I want to give you a key point to give him a diagnosis or a diagnosis and ask you for the key diagnosis and so on. But you have to finish all the partition and then start to make your notes to correlate between these notes. Okay, next question. Okay. 
18 year old male is shot in the left chest he was unstable but his blood pressure has improved with 1 liter of crystal oil his chest x-ray shows a left sided pneumothorax with no lung visible what is the best course of action um, a insertion of 14 f uh, chest drain thoracotomy in emergency department insertion of 36 uh, uh, fa chest drain thoracotomy in theater then last one is the thoracoscopy as i saw in the problem there is a, a patient is unstable and uh, though uh, improve with one liter of blood and chest x-ray show left sided pneumothorax with no lung visible so the pneumothorax is severe pneumothorax so i think it should be insertion of 36 uh, friends uh, chest drain i think c exactly i, I remember when we worked in the uh, in er most um, um, chest drains was starting from 32 up to 38 i think so this is the range of normal adult chest tube x-ray uh, chest drain to to insert from 32 up to 36 37 38 sorry i think this is the most common uh, numbers we always uh, practice in er okay so 36 french chest drain is the right answer for a patient with hemo or pneumothorax Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Mr. <coughs> okay. Dr. Uh, Dr. Mohanad and Dr. Dafir. Okay. Sixty years old, non-development population while on acu-surgical unit. On ECG show a broad, spec, a broad complex tachycardia at a rate of 150 beat per minute. His blood pressure 124 over 18.2 millimeter mercury and there is no evidence of the heart failure. The surgical constatation I want to give a rate control. His medical team are not answer their bleed, bleeps. Which of the following is least approve, appropriate to give? Uh, Procanamide, uh, lidocaine, amidaron, adenosine, virapamil. I said Virapamil. It's pure pharma question. Yes. Okay. Uh, think about uh, uh, rate control for a tachycardia or any arrhythmia. So, procainamide, lidocaine, amidaron, adjustment can, you can give, but Virapamil mm. you can't give. I think Virapamil is a calcium channel blocker. Yes. I, I can't remember exactly. So you can't give it in, in rate control or has no role in rate control. And here is also said it is contraindicated. Okay. okay. Pharma question will be repeated like this. So you don't have to go for rate control and arrhythmia control drugs and all cardiac drugs to differentiate between this. Keep this question in your mind and hope they are repeated again. Next, Dr. Mohanad. Yes, sir. A 62 years old male attend the hernia clinic. He suddenly developed speech problem, left facial weakness, and left-sided arm and leg weakness, lasting longer than five minutes. A CT head show no intracerebral bleed. What is the next line management? Uh, aspirin, aspirin, it's a particular uh, urgent to fill for thrombolysis. So as long as he's uh, getting a stroke and that last uh, 
in the around five minutes. So we may go for uh, thrombolysis. That's answer B. Yes, sir. Okay. Does a patient has? You get a stroke. So. Yeah, starts with infarction. Yeah. Stroke and. Um, If you give aspirin, that's the will, problem uh, to be more. Yeah. It will increase the problem, yes. And no, he, he tells you the CT sh head shows no intracerebral pain. You, 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 you scare, you're afraid from aspirin and whatever aspirin, 300 or 75 could be the greater because of any bleeding. So if, if there is any bleeding and you give any uh, blood sinner, you can aggravate the problem. But there is no here. Uh, there is clotting of the blood. There is thrombosis actually causing the causing the um, this manifestation and causing the, st the stroke. But here is the best is urgent thrombolysis because the problem lasts for facial weakness, left sided arm and leg weakness lasting more than five minutes. So this all. Um, needs urgent thrombolysis, okay? What do you, wh wh where do you expect this uh, stroke or this thrombosis happen in each WAPA, in each, in which artery or which circulation do you expect? Middle cerebral, um, right sided, right cerebral artery. Middle cerebral. middle cerebral, right sided, right middle cerebral artery. Exactly, because we have arm and leg weakness as he uh, gave weakness in the arm and leg. Also, the speech problem with the Broca's and Vernix area, which is mainly supplied by the middle cerebral artery. And as we said about the cortex is manifested by the body upside down, the starting from the legs and the arm. So it is affecting some of the uh, lower limb and the arm together with the speech area. Speech area, that means that you are uh, talking about the uh, middle cerebral artery. Sometimes they say this anterior circulation. Okay, but mainly here the middle cerebral artery because it's affecting the speech area, okay? Exactly, as we said here, anterior cerebral artery, more than the lower limbs and the upper. In the middle cerebral artery is upper more than lower, but contralateral hemi, anopia and aphasia, vernix aphasia and the gaze of normalities, posterior contra, contralateral hemi, anopia with macular sparing, and posterior, we have many manifestations for the posterior, not only contralateral hemianopia. Okay. The most important also is the lacunar, the lacunar and we have a, pro, a question about a lacunar uh, infarction in the uh, uh, neurosurgery section about isolated hemiparesis, hemisensory loss, or hemiparesis on the limb ataxia, this is lacunar infarction. Put this in your mind is important. Also, we have one question only we pass in the neurosurgery department about lacunar infarction, which is, is, is represents with isolated hemiparesis, hemisensory loss or hemiparesis with limb at, ataxia. Next question. Who's there? It's me, I think. Dr. Montaz, okay. A 45, a 45 year old man is seen in the emergency department with nausea, pallor, and lethargy. He has no past medical history of note. A cannula is inserted in serum urine electrolytes for the following sodium 140 millimole per liter, it's less, 
potassium um, sodium not less okay potassium is more 6.7 millimole per liter bicarbonate is 14 millimole per liter urea is 18.2 millimole per liter and creatinine is 230 micromole per liter and ecg shows peaked t waves so this is due to hyperkalemia what is the most appropriate initial management a nebulized salbutamol b intravenous bicarbonate c hemodialysis d insulin or dextrose with insulin plus dextrose infusion e infusion calcium gluconate so the answer is e infusion calcium gluconate to stabilize the myocardium because this patient has hyperkalemia it can become arrhythmic anytime so you have so, to first uh, stabilize the myocardium then correct the potassium so you give intravenous calcium gluconate intravenous calcium gluconate. exactly this is to stabilize the myocardium before you start to collect the hyperkalemia okay this patient mostly i think he will go more i think more than six some patient go for hemodialysis but here is asking about uh, the most appropriate initial management initial management and the patient has an ecg changes so the patient can go for arrhythmia so you have to go for intravenous calcium gluconate to support and protect the heart before you go to the definite management okay this is the management of hyperkalemia this is a big station in part b uh, you have to put in your mind uh, stabilize the patient cardiac membrane with intravenous calcium gluconate then go for the uh, definite management with insulin dextrose infusion initially and salbutamol and also uh, removal of extra potassium from the body by potassium uh, rising agent rising agent and uh, risonium and diuretics and dialysis dialysis i think more than six you go for that I think Dr. Abdul Khadir, you want to ask about anything? Can I go ahead? Hello, sir. I have mm -hmm. uh, I have a question basically about this scenario. Um, in uh, uh, January two thousand nineteen, there was a question came about uh, hyperkalemia. The scenario was like um, the patient have. Uh, moderate dehydration uh, there was moderate sign of dehydration and potassium was high so they gave uh, for uh, they gave option like fluid challenge and rectal resonium among five those two was um, more uh, appropriate answer so what will be the answer in case of a patient having a ckd patient having moderate dehydration and with hyperkalemia but uh, there was only two appropriate uh, like uh, fluid intravenous fluid and uh, rectal resonium so what will go with that type of scenario the calcium resonium we give it at a last stage after you stabilize the patient you don't it, it is not given in the start Okay. So if the patient, I don't know exactly the, the complete scenario, but I have to go for 2019 recalls. Uh, just to answer it right, I, I can't remember exactly the, uh, the question, but calcium resonium is not the, uh, the emergency treatment that you give a patient still dehydrated. Patient dehydrated, you give fluid, patient have hyperkalemia, you start with calcium gluconate, and then goes a definite treatment mostly you will find about insulin dextrose infusion. At, okay. uh, I, I, uh, this is sometimes you give dextrose 10% with uh, insulin, about five to 10 units to uh, uh, push the insulin to go into the cellular and then give salpitamol for the patient. All these measures to decrease the uh, extra, uh, extra cellular um, cal, uh, potassium and then go at last then the patient you can give 
any removal, uh, any drugs for removal of extra potassium after the patient is stabilized. So if the patient is dehydrated, you go for fluid. If the patient has hyperkalemia, you go for different treatment. I don't remember exactly. If you have complete scenario, you can post it in the group and we can discuss it. No problem with me. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. By the way, put in your mind when you are solving the recalls reco are incomplete scenarios remembered by uh, exam candidates. Sometimes it's wrong and don't try to solve an incomplete scenario by any choice or just put a, an imagination for the, for the missed part of the scenario to solve it during, okay, if any incomplete scenario during recall, please, please pass it. Really pass it. It will confuse you more than help you. Any incomplete scenario, pass it. Please, don't confuse yourself. If you found the question is not clear, and uh, now I'm, I'm just preparing now uh, these days about recalls and try to uh, solving and try to correct and try to add some information and try to complete some scenarios I know from different recalls. Uh, and I'm just, any question is unclear, I'm just uh, remove it from recalls, okay? Next question. Okay. Um, um, a 22 year old man has a full thickness burn of his leg after being trapped in a car, with a burning car. There are no fractures of the limb. Their bone is circumferential. After two hours, he complains of tingling of his left and it appears dusky. What is the best management for this? I will go for. Um, as keratome, but then I'm thinking maybe the patient has developed compartment syndrome. But my first answer will be as keratome. I have fast but as keratome is my first answer. So you Hello, am I hurt? You go for as keratome. As keratome. So what, what's your diagnosis here? B. Your diagnosis, diagnosis. Um, initially, um, I'm thinking it's because of the, the bone, you have S-curse, but then again, I'm thinking of the patient has um, compartment syndrome, which I, I think a patient has, and then that would answer would be faster to me, but then, I think the person has compartment syndrome. Exactly. There's a compensial bone and then the singling of the limb with dusky. Exactly. Fasciotomy. Exactly. This is a circumferential, any circumferential burn in, uh, in chest. You have to start with scarectomy or a scarectomy, any mm -hmm. circumferential burn in limb and with manifestation of uh, okay. Compartment syndrome, tingling, numbness, uh, decreased movement, paresthesia. Uh, even he, he will not mention about the pulse. You can go for first. Screctomy is a, 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 a process and a step before fasciotomy. Okay, this is a step before fasciotomy, so you have to go for it. All, all questions talking about in the, uh, I think we noticed now we are more than 80 questions till now. All questions come to a circumferential burn. The answer was correct to me. All the questions till now. So he wanted to uh, 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 make you think and put in your mind any circumferential wound. You have to look for ischemia or for difficulty breathing and something like this and put this correct to me as the first step you have to do. Okay, uh, Dr. Rada just joined us. She can go for the next question and then go for our doctors. Dr. Rada. Good go. evening and thank you. Yeah. Okay, I will come just late, but you can <laughs> go for next two or three questions. Okay, next question, please. Okay. 
uh, a 28 year old man is in the surgical intensive care unit. He has suffered a flyal chest injury several hours earlier and he was intubated and ventilated. Over the past few minutes, he has become increasingly hypoxic and it's now needing an increasing ventilation pressure. What's the most common cause? Pulmonary embolism, cardiac tamponade, uh, fat embolism, uh, tension, pneumothorax, or adult respiratory distress syndrome. So the patient has a um, flyal chest and now he is hypoxic and he's already intubated. Um, maybe tension, pneumothorax, or cardiac tamponade because it's something. Uh, happening suddenly. I think tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure exactly. But because he is already has a flyal chest, so there is pulmonary contusion. So maybe uh, a flap valve effect or something like that that lead to tension pneumothorax. Plus he he is mm -hmm. deteriorating suddenly. So I think it's tension pneumothorax. Tension, I'm sorry, anyone has different answer? D, 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 we have. There's an appeal for option D. D. Okay, let's let's go for this question by exclusion. Is okay. it a pulmonary embolism? How what's what's meaning but you want to increase the ventilation pressure? Okay. What meant by this? Um, uh, the mechan mechanical uh, uh, ventilator that is used, either volume controlled or pressure controlled, I think there is an increase. Pressure. You give you give a pressure for uh, expanding the lungs. And yes, to maintain another, uh, the patency of all the lungs. Another pressure, and there's another pressure in the different direction pushing you. So you are trying to increase the pressure. It is pulmonary embolism or any in the scenario with the flail chest uh, 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 go with any pulmonary embolism features. No. Okay. Cardiac tamponade. No. No, because I try it. Fat embolism. It's the same like pulmonary embolism. Yes. No dyspnea. No, no pigmentation in the retina. Adult respiratory distress syndrome. No mention for FiO2 and PO2 or something like that. Um, Is it after several hours in ages the patient can have ERDS? Um, I think that is um, completely, yeah. completely, 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 uh, completely wrong or completely difficult to patient several hours after flail chest, he have uh, a problem like ARDS. Okay, all the scenario here, all the scenario exact, tension pneumosaurus, all the scenario, oh, yes. this is flail chest, this is flail chest, mm -hmm. this is trauma. He asking about trauma. Okay, mm -hmm. he doesn't mention any long bone fracture. Yes. Pulmonary mm -hmm. embolism. What say, is the relation between flail chest and yes? Can I say okay. in, if in a case of AR, ARDS they will have mentioned congested lungs, or maybe perhaps they will have given something with regards to the X-ray. If uh, it was ARDS. Yes, ARDS. No, he he, he will have. Many pro, but not not congested lung. He will, ARDS has many features like X-ray features, and the patient may be few mm -hmm. days after Happy. after being admitted mm -hmm. and uh, bilateral uh, uh, bilateral uh, pulmonary infiltrates and mm -hmm. FiO2 uh, is low. Um, um, a what else? Maybe the patient has feverish. Maybe the patient has looking many problem with ARDS. Not here. Not here in the in, in our scenario, okay. but here is talking about the trauma. So you should 
point your attention about what what's here related to trauma tension pneumothorax and fat embolism if the patient mentioned a long bone fracture okay may he mention and he will give you difficult breathing disney and 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 but the only thing and the only two scenarios the only two scenarios mentioned here in trauma and the patient you need to increase your ventilation pressure was the answer is tension pneumothorax any pressure pushing you to increase the the ventilation pressure uh, in in a short time so you have a problem sometimes he told you you are uh, you are um, uh, inserting a central venous catheter few minutes you need to increase the uh, ventilation pressure so you make attention pneumothorax you have a a, a a a pleural injury and you you inserted some air or something like this parotromos a uh, parotroma mm -hmm. or 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 a iatrogenic trauma to the pleura and here here is the same about this here is the same about increasing the ventilation pressure this the patient has an increased intrapleural pressure which is tension pneumothorax next question Who's there, Doctor Ali? Yeah, uh, ten-year-old boy is playing with the firework, which uh, explodes, and he sustains full thickness burn to his left arm. Which of the following statement is not characteristic of this situation? They have a lethargic appearance. the The burn area is extremely painful until skin grafted. They always heal with a scarring, blanching does not occur under pressure, absence of or a few blisters. Yeah, this is a full thickness, this is third degree burn. So uh, I'm going with B because the burn area is extremely painful, it's not painful, it's bad. This. So, Sorry. Yeah, I'm going with uh, B again. because because the third degree or full thickness burn is not uh, associated with pain because it is painless. And this is wrong. Painless. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. The burn will have a lizard appearance. It will always heal by scarring. Blanching doesn't occur because this is a full thickness. And um, absence of few blisters. No, no blisters, mostly in whole sickness can burn. So the only one is uh, extremely painful because this full sickness will damage the, the uh, neural bundle and neural uh, branches and the patient, it will be painless. The same with the blanching because there will be damage of the superficial capillaries and the blood vessels. Yeah. Next question. Which of the features below following a head injury is not an indication for an immediate CT head scan in children? Drowsiness, single discrete episode of vomiting, uh, nine, nine months old child with six centimeter hematoma of the head, numb left arm, suspicion of non accidental head injury. B because it's more than one. Which is of the following is not an indication. In all of the following is an indication except. Yes. So drowsiness B. is an indication. Yes. Single is not an indication. So more than? One. Yes, more than one vomiting episode is an indication, but single Episode is not an indication. Yes. Single episode is not an indication. Exactly. And this is a protocol in children. I think we have about the protocol before of, of adults. This is a protocol of children. Just put in your mind, I'll keep it to, so you can take a screenshot or just you can study. It. Okay. In the children, Amnesia, loss of consciousness, drowsiness, 
three or more this case episode of one three or more yes three or more so more than two more than more than one in an adult more than one in adults three or more discrete episodes of vomiting is an indication indication for ct scan exactly doctor okay yes doctor Montes, thank you next question what is the least likely examination finding in patient with lay for two fracture uh, number one excessive mobility of the palate parastasia in the region supplied by the inferior alveolar nerve malocclusion of the teeth anophthalmos parastasia in the region supplied by the in infraorbital nerve um, i guess the answer should be parastasia in the region supplied by the inferior alveolar nerve b parastasia in the region supplied by the inferior alveolar nerve yes so le for two is fracture including including um, i forgot the there is a mark basically i forgot that but it's inferior alveolar nerve I guess. Okay. So here is D42. Here is D42. Okay, excessive mobility of the palate, yes, because it's including the infra, the inferior orbital ridge and the nose, so it is a pyramidal in shape. Also, uh, mal occlusion of the teeth, yes, inophthalmus, yes, and paracesia in the region supplied by the infra, infraorbital nerve, infraorbital nerve, but not the inferior alveolar nerve will not affect. Okay, next question. Yes. A 63 years old man undergo a sleep abdominal perineal excision of the anus and the rectum for recurrent anal cancer. He has previously been treated with the radical chemotherapy. The conclusion of the procedure there is 10 by 10, perineal skin defect. What is the most appropriate for provide the closure? For provide the closure. Uses of the pack, wound management system, rotational flap, deep tension suture and the primary closure, medical myocutaneous flap, delay primary closure. So it is the big one, and I choose pedical mucocutaneous flap, D. I'm not sure. Pedical mucocutaneous flap, okay. Because back it is not, rotational flap it is long. So I choose D. Choose pedicle, my opinion for lab. Yeah. Anyone has different answer? Um, my opinion is flab because uh, the patient has already uh, radical chemo radiotherapy, so there is no chance for spontaneous healing. You must um, re uh, replace the lost tissue. So I think it's right, pedicle, my opinion is flab. Okay. Also, it's a pressure area. A person sits, it's also pressure area, exactly. so you need bulky coverage. Yes, and it's a large defect, 10 by 10 yes. cm. Defect. Yes. So this is a large defect, so deep tension suture. 
primary closure no delayed primary closure no uh, yes. the radiotherapy already have uh, uh, will will make normal healing is very difficult to happen a uh, use of vac for wound management no vac we use it more for for some septic wounds and not for clean operation you're preparing the patient for a cancer Rotation scan flap, we, we used to do rotation scan flaps for small defects, uh, mostly in the face. And even I, 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 even in this place, the uh, rotation scan flap in an area with radical chemo I, 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 I think it will not be a good choice for healing because the same you are just keeping an a regional skin or a regional scan with subcutaneous tissue or with muscle with the same problem with vascularity because of radical chemo radiotherapy. But a pedicle myotomous flap may be, yes, the most suitable answer for this. Okay. Exactly. He said here, rotation skin flap will compromise irradiated tissue as well radiated tissue as well, okay? So the best here is pedicle myocutaneous flap. Next question. A medical F1 phones you as he is concerned his patient has had a major internal bleed. The patient is 42 years old and is known to have sickle cell anemia. His blood results are hemoglobin 3.7 gram per real and reticulocyte count is 0.4%. His hemoglobin is normally 7 gram per real. What is the diagnosis? A. Swas hemorrhage, B. Acute sequestration, C. Parvovirus, D. Splenic hemorrhage, and E. Acute hemolysis. So my answer is parvovirus because he has a low reticulocyte count. And the parvovirus B19, it affects the um, erythroid um, progenitor cells. So the body cannot, bone marrow cannot produce RBC at all, not even reticulocytes. So reticulocyte count falls. And there is certain hemoglobin, there's certain anemia. So it is parvovirus. Parvovirus. Exactly. Low retreat, he, he, he just said here, Ro. Low reticulocytic count indicates or virus infection, and this is one of the causes of sequestration and the hemolysis. Sequestration and hemolysis will cause high reticulocytic count, but this is infection by parvovirus may cause this picture of sickle cell anemia. A plastic crisis, as you said. Okay, last six questions. Who's there? Dr. Sarah. Okay, um, a 52 year old man presents with central chest pain. On examination, he has a mitral regurgitation momo. An ECG shows an ST elevation in lead B1 to B6. There is no ST elevation in lead. Uh, led to lead 3 AVF. What is the diagnosis? Uh, central chest pain. So you have a pulmonary embolism. Um, um, uh, Gohevis syndrome in fear, myocardial infarction, brain metal angina, Prince metal angina, and anterior myocardial infarct. I will go for anterior uh, myocardial infarct. Because of what's your diagnosis here? Mm? Because there is, there is um, in an ST elevation, MI, there is an ST elevation in B1 to B6. And what is the mitral regression? My infarction. Uh, it has a mitral regression more. It also involved with vulvular incompetence. I'm not sure. Uh, I have comment. This is a. Uh... Uh, arrhythmia or murmur, maybe after or am I? 
Okay. Yeah. And anterior abdomen is coming in the, actually it's come in the V2, V3, and V4. Anterior abdomen. Mm -hmm. So that is right. This is anterior abdomen. Okay. Yes, from yes. V1 to V6, this is anterior abdomen. From mm -hmm. we said, um, this is the anterior leads and also the inferior leads, which is from 2, 3, and AVF and mm -hmm. ABL. All these are inferior myocardial infarction. Okay. And, and the patient so has an award. A mitral uh, this, murmur. Uh, yes. Just a question about uh, the murmur. Is it due to papillary muscle destruction? Yes. Maybe yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Maybe it, exactly. which is occurred after the MI. This is resultant from the MI. Yes. Okay, thank so you. The papillary muscle necrosis and then it ruptures, resulting in mitral rigor. Yes. That's why. Yes. Okay. Next question. Dr. Gada? A 17-year-old male involved in a motorcycle accident in which he is uh, thrown from his motorcycle. On admission, he has distended neck veins and weak pulse. The trachea is central. Uh, this is a big triad, uh, tamponed. Okay, hemopericardium. B, hemopericardium. 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 The patient has distended uh, neck veins and weak, weak, weak pulse. pulse. Trachea is, is central, so we are away from any problem with pneumothorax or tension or or tracheal bronchial or aortic dissection. The patient would not arrive to the hospital, so this is cardiac tamponade. Yeah. Okay, cardiac tamponade. But if he said here, the patient has Empty neck veins? Uh, hemothorax. Will be hemothorax. So this is the difference between the two scenarios with V pulse, maybe the patient with hemothorax. Sometimes also is with, with tachycardia, but will he have distant heart sound sometimes? Yes. But empty neck veins will go for hemothorax. Congested neck veins mostly will come with hemopericardium or cardiac tamponade. Next question, Dr. Ali. Yeah, 52-year-old uh, male type 2 diabetic, diabetic is admitted to vascular ward for femoral popliteal bypass. He suddenly develops like, uh, expressive dysphasia and marked dry side weakness. The senior house officer arranged an CT head scan, which shows 60% left middle cerebral artery territory infarct. There are no beds on the stroke unit. Overnight, the patient becomes unresponsive and CT head confirmed no bleed. What is the next best management option? Uh, IV heparin, clobidogrel, bar hole surgery, aspirin, hemicraniotomy. Um, develop this page again, this senior CT scan show Left size of infarction. Okay, there is no bed. No, no, no. Patient unresponsive. It can confirm no bleed. Okay, this is this. Um, this is this, uh, infarction. So we have to give uh, either uh, anticoagulants. I think I'm going with the anticoagulants. Um, IV heparin. I'm not sure actually. Okay. Yeah, but I'm going with IV heparin. Dr. Rada, Dr. Mutaz, what do you think? Dr. Zafer? I think uh, it is an increase in intracranial pressure here. So this here, I don't know. I goes with the
either barrel hole or him train you to me. But I barrel hole. Barrel hole. You go for a brain edema, so you are going to barrel hole or hemicraniotomy. Yeah. And some go for IV heparin. Many for IV heparin. Okay, let's show exactly mm -hmm. as said hemicraniotomy. Yes, because it this is, is a case of yeah. There is no bleeding, but the patient is unresponsive, so the patient has an increased intracranial pressure due to cerebral edema. So the patient will go for hemicraniotomy. Third hole, we do it for localized collection yes, right. of. Yes, without without uh, investigation, without CT, but with the CT, so hemicraniotomy. Yes. Okay, but exactly. Per hole, we can have a localized bleeding area, so we can go for it. But if you want to decrease decompression of the brain edema, you go for hemicraniotomy. Okay, it is called decompressive hemicraniotomy to relieve the pressure. Okay, next question. A 42-year-old motorcyclist is involved in a road traffic accident. A fast scan is in the emergency department shows free intra-abdominal fluid and a laparotomy is performed. At operation, there is, there is evidence of a small liver laceration that has stopped bleeding and adhered to the inferior bowl of the spleen. What is the best course of action? Proceed to spleenectomy. Attempt measures to conserve the spleen. Resection of the anterior bowl of the spleen. Ligate the splenic vein alone. Fully mobilize the spleen to inspect it. Um, think B. We will try to conserve the spleen. Okay, most of you is answering B, 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 B. Okay, exactly. As you have the patient has a small tear in the inferior pool of the spleen, as we said about the three, the five stages of the splenic injury, up to the third to try to conserve up to third, try to conserve, conservative management of the spleen, and only spleenectomy go it for the fourth and fifth stage. Fourth stage is splenic hilum injury. Fifth stage is complete avulsion of the spleen. Otherwise, you go as you can for conservative treatment of the spleen. Okay? Just, just concept. He, he just wants you to put some concept. Here is the bleeding as there is some from the liver and the stop and some from um, the lower part of the spleen and it can be stopped and you can go for conservative treatment. Next question. A 56 year old female is admitted to an intensive therapy unit with a severe pancreatitis Thyroid function test show a TSH 0 0.5, which is low, thyroxine 1.0 low, and T3 0 0.5 low. What is the most likely causes? Seek euthyroid syndrome, Graves disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, levothyroxine, none of the above. Uh, as the scenario, the TSH is low and other two, uh, the T3 and T4 also uh, low. So which is why it should be sick euthyroid syndrome. Graves disease, there will be, T3, T4 will be high. And so I think it's sick euthyroid syndrome. Okay, as we said before, we said before in, uh, in the crime, 
the uh, section we said that the cases all cases of sick thyroid syndrome he will tell you a patient uh, he will tell you a patient um, is in ITU or ICU or intensive care or HDU or hospitalized and post-operative has a problem with the thyroid and all the parameters are low all the parameters are low in a hospitalized patient mostly in ITU or ICU or HDU and sometimes post-operative and this is or in severe case like severe pancreatitis this is a case of sick eusyroid syndrome all cases of sick eusyroid syndrome he he will tell you about hospitalized hospitalized patient in ITU or HDU okay and put in your mind all parameters are low and he will give you in the exam he will give you the normal range and normal parameters will be mentioned in the exam in all questions last question about gcs who's ready for gcs question whose turn for me dr Duffer. yes you're lucky at 20 years old mouth full of over and bangs his head wireless intoxication on arrive to emergency department he's open his eye a response to the speech so e uh, and is able to speak although he's disoriented he is obey motor command with the glasgow coma scale so il i response to the uh, open the eye spontaneously so it is three and able to speak to speech open speak. his eyes to speech oh yes this is three four three okay yes and uh, be able to speak also, it is disoriented, so it is uh, five, uh, four. And disoriented? Yes. Four? Yes. Out of five? Yes. And he and motor command, so it is three. I don't know. Obey motor command. Yes, obey motor command. Six. Six. Okay, if it's six, so it is 13. So it is? 13. 13. Exactly. Okay, try to write it in the exam. Yes. EVM 456 and try to so I, V, M, 3 and 4 and 6. So here is 16 is the right answer. Okay. okay. Does anyone have any problem with the last comma scale? I don't think so. There is another question, I think. Okay, we have, I think, one or two more questions. Okay. Last two questions. Question, Dr. A 36 year old man is admitted following a major electrical injury. He is assessed as having a second. Thirty percent of the total body surface area, which affects five percent of the total body surface area. He is catheterized, and the catheter drains fifty mL of dark colored urine. Which of the resuscitation protocols below is most appropriate in this case? Administration of four mKg per TVSA area of heart brain solution to achieve urine output of hundred mL per hour. Uh, rest is two, one, two, ten. So in electrical injury, we have to go for four mL per kg per TBSA of heart brain solution and to achieve um, more than one, I think two ml per kg per hour of urine output. So 
that will be a administration of uh, four ml per kg per TBSA, and to achieve you know hundred ml per hour. Okay. Administration of all four ml total body surface area. Horton solution to achieve your own output of 100 ml per hour. Yes, exactly. Last question. The question was there. Dr. Abdul Qadir. Okay. Um, okay. At, okay. At twin, uh, should I uh, read the question? Okay. Okay. Or, okay. Go for the last question. Go. Okay. Okay. Uh, a 28 year old man present with a burn injury secondary to a house fire. He has sustained 25% mixed full and partial thickness burn to his torso and limbs. Which of the following resuscitation protocol would be most appropriate in this case? Administration of 2 ml of Hartman weight in kg into 25 to a maintain of urine output 30 ml per hour, then 4 uh, ml Hartman to 25 uh, to maintain urine output 100, then uh, 3, uh, 3 ml 25 to urine output 70, administration of 2 ml 5% dextrose in 25, 50, and 2. I guess it should be uh, A. 2 ml Hartman. 2 ml Hartman weight, weight, weight in kg. In by the percent to maintain your output of 30 okay. ml per hour. 30 ml power hour, yes, it could be. Okay, exactly. Uh, the formula here we are talking about is two, two to four ml of Hartman. This Parkland formula okay. from two. And here is he said, prefer to give two ml, not to overload the patient. If the patient has no uh, severe injuries, you can start with two ml, but we used to have we used to give 4 ml and make the formula for this for a patient. And also you have to, so you have three parameters to look here. You have okay. to give Hartman, you don't have to give dextrose or dextrose saline. Okay, okay, so the last four and five are wrong. First three you are giving Hartman. First one is 2 ml and we, as we said, from 2 to 4 ml by body weight by percentage to maintain the output. And here we have to put the output. The output should be more than 0.5 per kg per hour. per hour. So, so it's it about, about 35, about 35, if you are talking okay. about 70, less than 35 or less than 30 ml. But it is not less than 100, okay? Except okay. maybe 4 ml is right, Hartman is right, percentage is right. Your output of 10 ml, no. This is, uh, uh, this is much ml. more, and this is, yes. And also 3 ml of Hartman weight for body weight to maintain your output, 70, no, at least 0 0.5, as Dr. Montes did, 0 0.5 per kg per hour on output. So it's about 35 exactly, Dr. Montez right equation. So this is the most acceptable one. So all is, we are talking about the, how much, which solution and urine output, not less than 0 0.5 or if he give it 30 or 35, but 100 ml is much more and 70 ml it's still, still also more. And here he said, in one protocol that try to give two ml, not four ml, not to overload the patient. This is, um, 
Yes, adults, they say it from two to four, Dr. Montez, from two to four about adult, about adult equation. That I think we finished. This is uh, last question. Okay. Uh, Thank you, 10, sir. 100, 100 ml, we want to, 100 ml, we want to protect the kidney, by the way. 100 ml, and, and most even in, in uh, sometimes in treatment of rhabdomyolysis, like what happens with the, um, with the electric uh, injury, anything you want to protect the kidney, anything you want to protect the kidney from getting failure or from getting acute renal failure, you have to uh, monitor the rate more than 10, 100 ml per hour. So you can protect the kidney for any myoglobinuria or any acute tubular necrosis or, or any problem for the kidney. You can keep its function by 100 ml per hour. That's why we prefer it in electric injury. Okay, for ML, body surface area of heart to solution to achieve urine output of 100 ml per hour. This is for electric major electric injury to protect the kidney, to protect the kidney. By any, by any cause, by the way, if you have compartment syndrome and the patient starts to have myoglobinuria, you have to give plenty of fluids and diuretics and keep it at least 100 ml. This is also a big station in part B about rhabdomyolysis and crash injury and trauma and critical care. And he will ask you about the urine rate you have to, to keep to protect the kidney. Thank you for you all. Thank you. We finished emergency and trauma. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Two hours. You're welcome. You. I'll just stop Thank the you. recording. Thank you very much, Thank you. Dr. Yusuf.